Hello everybody on YouTube, uh, this is Nantox here and I just wanted to give out a quick guide to playing co-op in Neo 2 because not many people are familiar with how the co-op works and uh, what's changed since the original game. So this is going to be quick, I'm here with Floxy, she's never played Neo before and this is going to be a great way to show off how simple it is to hop into co-op together with the new systems in Neo 2. So. Floxy, are you there? Yes, I'm at the map. Alright, so yeah, go to the starting point. And you say you have all those options, hut, shrine, blacksmith, all that stuff? Yes. So what you want to do is go to the Tory gate and hit expeditions. Okay. Now you hold on a second because I'm going to make a match. So I'm going to go to custom match, create a room. And when you do this, this is how you set up what you want the game to be. So what I would suggest is to just hit without conditions. Guest slot, you can change it now to be private and just have it be for your friends. So if you're trying to play with your friends, before you needed to have like an online code, it was kind of a hassle. But now it's very, very easy. You just go to guest slot, friends, and if you like, you can leave the second guest slot open for randoms. Or you can also make that friends because now Neo 2 has three player online co op, which is huge. So I'm going to leave it at private slot friends. I'm going to go to create a room. Also, you can hit triangle here to go to allow for advanced settings. You can allow people to join you mid mission, which is also a new setting. So we're just going to go to create a room, wait for friends. That's when I can search for you. So now when you go to search for somebody who has a room that's set up, you go without conditions, and then for special matching conditions, you just change it to friends. Then you just hit search for friends, and bam, Floxy's name pops right up. I click X. And after a little bit of a load, I'll be right into her game. No problem, no huss, no fuss. And from here, uh, one thing that's nice is they got rid of the time limit. So before there was a time limit and it kind of put a lot of pressure on you to get going. But now we can hit our companion information and I can see her, see what she's rocking. That's Floxy right there. She looks badass. Looks very cool. We can go back to starting point and when you hit starting point, so Flox, starting point is basically the thing that allows you to like sell items, upgrade your character. Yes, while you're playing in co-op together. So everything in the game can be done with two players the whole time, except for special side missions that may be solo only. But they really focus in the co-op big time for this game. See, one of the major differences with this kind of co-op is when you do this form of co-op, both players are physically here in the world. You see us both. She is not a spirit. I am not a spirit. We're both actively in the map. When you play co-op this way, progression is carried for both characters. You stop running around me like a psycho. <laughs> um, and what that means are, when you find items in the background, like this dead body up ahead, both players can grab it because you're both making the same campaign progress. So when I find hidden Kodamas, she can also find the hidden Kodamas, and it's equal progression. If you do co-op the other way, where I go to the shrine and I summon her into my level, she is mostly as a helper. She cannot grab items from the environment or do environmental discoveries unless she is the host in her own game. Oh, Floxy has died. <laughs> And Can't go in the water. <laughs> that's great. So what happened there is there's a blue gauge. Now the biggest difference between the two forms of co-op outside of who can make progression in the stage or not, there is a blue gauge above Floxy's name. That is the assist gauge. When you play Tory Gate Co-op, the penalty for both of us being here and being alive is that we have that gauge to work with. When one person dies, you have a limited amount of time to run over to them and revive them. The faster you revive them, the more of the gauge you pick up. If the gauge runs out, then it's game over, mission failed. Even if one player is alive and that gauge runs out, the mission is over. 
So you really want to make sure you keep that up at all times. And there are abilities, and every time you touch a shrine, that gauge will be restored a little bit. And so let's proceed and show off some more of the co-op here. Go over the guy on the right. I'll go over the guy on the left. Okay. Uh, was a little too far away. Oh no, not the instant kill again. Your boy is dead. I can't. I need to be revived. Stamina this way. Ow! Oh, yeah. and that's. I can hold yes. circle and revive myself. <laughs> but we don't have enough points, so we are both dead. And that, everybody, is how you play co-op in Neo 2. <laughs> Dying together. I hope everyone had a good time. I hope this video was informative. And uh, I'll see you all next time for some more Neo 2 co-op with Blaze and McCallion and some others who are really excited to get in here and play some co-op. Bye-bye, everybody.